So this is the first time I'm getting to try this knife maker's work. Now this is from Jaroslaw Kus. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, or JK Knives. He's a Polish knife maker, and I did get this from Polish Custom Knives, which I will link down in the description. They have a ton of amazing knife designs on their site. Um, a lot of high-end folding knives, all the way down to survival and hunting knives. Um, so tons and tons of options on their site. But one thing is that they drop new stuff pretty much daily, if not weekly. So you wanna keep up with them because things will drop on the site and they'll be gone quickly. So keep up with the site, you know, check out what they have if this is your cup of tea. Now, like I said, JK Knives, first time I'm getting to try this knife design out, but he does have other designs on the site. So definitely check them out if you're interested, but let's get a close look at the Integra. The JK Integra, man, this thing has a very streamlined, straightforward look with this beautiful satin finish over the scales. And you can see how tightly fit that blade is inside that handle. There's like no room for error. It is so tightly fit which is a beautiful thing, especially when they get everything else done right. Now you can see this thing has a very, very minimal flipper tab with you know just a, a nice little chamfer right there, or, you know, a nice little cut in edge. And there he, he does have other designs that we'll talk about here in a second that does have jimping on there. But I was worried that this was not maybe going to be the most comfortable flipper tab, but boy was I wrong. This thing is tuned. <laughs> <laughs> to perfection. The, the break from this flipper tab, you, you, the thing is, is that if it was stronger, I, it would be uncomfortable. If it was lighter, it wouldn't work. It's literally tuned to the perfect amount that when you start applying pressure, the second you, you really start thinking you're applying pressure, it just rapidly opens. The, the break is super clean, super consistent. <laughs> that drop is just guillotine-like. I don't know if it's on multi-row ceramic bearings. Uh, it might be because this thing feels like oiled glass. I mean, there's just like nothing. You don't, it's almost ghost-like the way it, it just moves in that handle. And then with this tight of tolerances, my goodness, is that, that a, a very, very good feeling. Um, very high quality feeling, you know, it, it, it's, you, you can just see the little fine details and then mixed with this ultra premium smooth action and very consistent breaking detent. Yeah, that, that's, that's very nice. But as you break the detent, it's almost like, because once the detent breaks, it's like the flipper tab exposes itself a little bit more. So it's almost like it gets bigger as you break the detent, making it a super comfortable rapid deployment. You kind of can do a little bit of like the push button with it a little bit, like especially with like the side of your finger. Um, but you know, it's um, kind of an in-between. You basically do a light switch push button combination, I guess, kind of uh, to some extent. Um, it's not an uncomfortable flipper. Um, it's very easy to use. It's, it's great, yeah, it's fantastic. You would think that, you know, it being so small, um, that it might not be, but they just, the way he tuned this detent is so good. M390 hand satin sheep's foot blade. He does have some other blade shapes. Uh, beautiful hand satin. Now the M390 is 61 HRC. Now I know we, in a lot of cases, like to see 62 with um, M390. However, this is exactly what we want with M390. Let me explain. M390, in most cases, the reason why we see it all over the board and the reason why it's never consistent is because of mass production, because it's mass produced. They're trying to heat treat more knives than they can, more knives than they can ever get consistent, and then it makes it to where none of them are consistent. And that's why you can take five of the exact same knife and they all have different edge retention. Um, they all have different sharpening experiences, blah, 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 blah. Something like this, this is done in a small batch. It's a handmade knife. So this is exactly how M390 should be done when it comes to folding knives, when it comes to pocket knives. So you can pretty much guarantee you're gonna get a high quality heat treatment. And at 61 HRC, 
uh, M390 is perfectly fine. It's a, it's a good HRC for it. Uh, we like to see 61 to 62. 62 is, you know, a lot of times what we like to see on folding knives, but the biggest thing is the quality of the heat treatment, which is what we got here. So I'm very, very happy with that. Another thing that's really cool is he actually has, at least to my knowledge, the way I'm reading it, is that the steel lock bar insert is also M390, so it's a piece of M390 that's replaceable. So if you ever have problems with lockup or lock bar travel or anything like that, you can get a new lock bar insert put in, which will bring it back to basically like brand new, which is really, really cool because over time you squeeze it and things like that, the lock bar might travel over or, or for whatever reason. So that is really, really cool. I imagine that this is a good example of where you could actually feel M390 at, at, at its the level it should be. Um, man, that action's so good. Now, sorry, when you open it up, the, the flipper tab is not proud, so or it's a little proud, but not much. So it allows you to choke all the way up to the edge very comfortably. You don't even really feel it. I mean, you feel it a little bit if you want to, but you know, you can just comfortably grip it without ever feeling that flipper tab. It's never in the way, which is really, really nice and also adds to the, to the grip length. Now, I know a lot of people know the size of a Sabenza. So you can kind of see they're relatively the same size. I will say you do have a little bit more grip on this one, on the JK. So you can see with I'm, when I'm choked up all the way, you can see how much I have hanging out. But even if I choke back, there's a lot of room on there. The access to the lock bar, they left you a chamfer on the edge. They did not cut it back, but I will say, it's very comfortable, very easy to disengage. The blade, you know, you can control it right here if you don't want it to hit your finger, or you can just kind of let it drop down and get your finger, and it pretty much hits right here for the most part. So, very comfortable. I can get it from the side. <laughs> it's so damn smooth. So I'm not mad at the, the access to the lock bar, but I am usually very picky about that. Um, so that would be, you know, if I was going to give like any sort of small nitpick, I would say, I'd, you know, maybe more lock bar access, but that's not saying that it has bad lock bar access or that it's uncomfortable. And I say this a lot that, you know, you can take a knife that's ultra premium. And if you put bad lock bar access, if it, if it's uncomfortable to disengage that knife, if it's sharp or anything like that, it to me, completely lowers the quality of the knife. In my opinion, like you can take a perfectly knife, a perfect knife that just feels super premium and destroy it with horrible lock bar access. So this one's good. You know, it's just, if I, you know, a preference would be a, um, to cut some back from this side, but it's still really, really good. Now the clip, titanium mill pocket clip, but look at this cutout for the lock bar. It's big, right? But then he chamfered the edges. So when it goes in the pocket and goes back out, you don't have to worry about your jeans getting caught on this corner because it's chamfered. It's like a ramp. Um, now I do notice there's a little bit of room underneath that clip a little bit. I do prefer them to be touching. Um, it's not that big of a deal. I don't feel it vibrating or anything like that, but you know, just an observation. The clip does work well though. You can see we have an over travel stop and you know, large hardware. I think it's T8 for the steel lock bar insert and the body screws, which is really nice. Very smooth disengagement, no stick whatsoever. Just absolutely glassy, glassy, smooth, frictionless. Um, I'm trying to come up with other words to express, you know, the how smooth. Um, the backspacer is full titanium and it does match up perfectly, perfectly well fit. But then I noticed from here to here, it kind of starts barely, barely poking out. I'm sure that was intentional, um, but, but it's very nice. Very, very well done. Now, uh, as far as, because I, I wanted to talk about the Rockstead. So they do have some that, in my opinion, that at least the blade shape reminds me of Rockstead a little bit. It reminds me of something like this a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit more of a straight back instead of a drop point, um, or maybe more straight than, than more drop, if that makes sense. But what I'm trying to say is that I really, I think that this is a gorgeous looking knife, you know, this, this whole profile. And he has some that has similar profiles. Um, I almost got that one over this one, to be honest. Um, and that one does have a little bit of texturing on the flipper tab. But the reason why I'm stating that is that 
Rocksteads are really great. They're awesome, amazing knives, but they are on washers. So they have a slow rolling action. They don't have a rapid deploying fall shut action. You know, that's just not the way they are. So if you like the, the look of a Rockstead, but you want that, that modern, extremely glassy, smooth, fall shut type of action with a crispy detent, you might want to check out JK Knives. Um, yeah, these are gorgeous. I love how the blade sits perfectly in the handle. You just have a little bit poke out at the nose. Um, it's got its logo down here, JK. The, it does have a captured pivot. Freaking gorgeous. So lots of milling on the inside, and that does bring down the weight. In my opinion, it's not a very heavy knife. Um, now, as far as nitpicks go, um, I, I do have a couple, right? One is... Um, even though I want to be clear, I'm very happy he used a, a, you can tell he used a fixed angle system on the edge. And the reason why that's great is because the best possible way for you to sharpen an edge on a knife is with stones. That is the best. It's been proven over and over. The best quality edges are done by stones. Most companies, even most knife, most custom knife companies, they do them on a belt. A belt has the chances of burning the edges. Of course, there's things you can do to prevent burning of the edge, but regardless, a belt sharpened edge will never be as good a quality as an edge done on stones. This was done on stones. I can clearly see that, but he did put a high edge angle on there. I prefer a little bit of a lower edge angle. However, it is crispy sharp. Very, very, very sharp. No complaints on the sharpness or anything like that. But the reason why I'm saying it is that the edge bevel is very tiny, right? And if you look, the plunge grind is fairly close to the edge. Now, if I kept his edge angle, then yeah, I have a few sharpenings. But when I lower back the edge angle, um, like to the, the angle I would want, I'm going to pretty much take away a lot of this. And by the second, third sharpening, I'm gonna start hitting the plunge grind. I would prefer this moved back and give me a lot of life. Give me plenty of sharpenings. Give me the room to choose if I want a low angle or a high edge angle. I get a lot, I used to get a lot of like handmade custom knives in for sharpening. And you know, uh, in a lot of cases, a lot of people want low edge angles, you know, and they've sharpened them already a few times or had them sharpened a few times. So it's nice to know that you have the ability to sharpen your knife many, many times without ever worrying about hitting the plunge grind. Because on a knife like this, that would just, it just make it look ugly. So um, I would prefer if the plunge grind was moved back a little bit. Now I didn't measure the thickness behind the edge with his edge angle, which like I said, is a high edge angle. I'm not sure how high it is, but with his edge angle, it's about seven, eight thousandths behind the edge. Very, very very thin. But if I lowered it back to the edge angle I would put on there, it'd probably be about 10 to 12 thousandths behind the edge. So very, very thin geometry. Um, 126 thousandths blade stock thickness. So it does have a relatively, you know, decently, it's pretty much average. So I wouldn't say it's a super slicey blade stock, but it's also not a super like thick, robust one. It's right there in that happy medium area. Um, so um, no problems with that. That's actually a, a good thing. It allows you to get down to a, a thinner edge. Um, the next little nitpick is, you know, the clip could be touching the scale. I wish that was happening. Um, the next thing, which the clip works fine, but, you know, and I don't feel any vibrations from it or anything like that. You know, I literally have to tap it to hear that, but, you know, just shaking it or anything, you don't hear nothing. So, um, but the next nitpick is I can actually touch the edge right here very slightly. I don't think it'll ever cut you. I don't think when you're putting your hands in your pocket, you're going to cut yourself or anything like that. I want to make that clear, but I can't ever so slightly touch the very, very end right here. Um, so, you know, maybe that'd have been something, you know, that maybe the, the, the bigger plunge grind might've helped. I don't know. Uh, it's not a bad thing though. Like it's not like a big deal. It's just, you know, these are these are tiny nitpicks, guys. These, this is not something I'm trying to say like that there, there's real negatives. These are just little tiny nitpicks uh, that I'm going through because when you start talking about knives of this price, you kind of you kind of have the, the ability to go through them with a fine tooth comb. And I do that even with budget knives. So I'm definitely gonna do it with a premium knife. Other than that, the only other little nitpick and maybe a little bit more lock bar access, but like I said, it's not bad at all. It's really, really good. That would be just, you know, like if I designed it, that's what I would do. But you know, like if I had the choice to cut one in right now, I wouldn't do it. Um, 
So all in all, man, very good experience with this knife um, for the first time I'm getting to try this knife company or this, you know, this custom knife maker. You can see it right here next to the Herman Ishtar, which they also have on their site. The Herman Ishtar, oh my goodness, I freaking love this knife, guys. I actually brought this with me to, uh, there's this Japanese restaurant that, um, it's kind of like a Kobe's where they, they flip the, the, the spatulas around you, you know, they light the fire in front of you and they cook all the food right there in front of you. And I, you know, it was a, a birthday party I went to and I brought this with me. And uh, yeah, I was super proud of it. Took some pictures with it. <laughs> Listen to that sound. You gotta love it. Um, so yeah, like, and they have tons of Hermans on Polish Custom Knives um, um, site. So definitely check that out and check out also what's going on with um, JK Knives. This is the Integra, but there's a bunch of other versions on there that you can check out. And also, you know, because they're custom, they come with different, you know, finishes, different colors, different patterns, different this, different that. So, man, it's crazy how good that flubber tab works for how tiny it is. It's, it's surprisingly snappy um, and, and surprisingly not uncomfortable. So there you guys go. Work hard. Stay tough. Until next time. Peace.